Welcome to MMA Noise. I'm Mike Strocker, coming to you from Henzo Gracie Academy in New York City. We're about to sit down with Lee McGeary, the Bellator light heavyweight champion of the world. Would you call this fight the best, the, the biggest fight of your life? Yes, definitely. Uh, the guy I'm fighting is, is, is who he is. This is definitely going to be one of the biggest fights I've ever had, you know, and every fight gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Your career has been phenomenal and a meteoric rise, m mostly because you finish guys as quick as Ronda Rousey finishes her opponents. I mean, uh, what, what do you attribute to your knockout power? Just training hard, uh, ferocious punches, just... I just like to finish fights, man. I, I like the entertainment value of, of finishing a fight. I don't let, let, let it go to the judges. I, I just... I just like to go, go in for the kill and, and, and finish everything off. Is the hype of this fight something new to you, where you know, you, you've got to talk trash against Tito or he's got to talk trash against you to hype up the fight? It's a different level of, of, um, of publicity, isn't it? I don't know, I mean, I, I, don't, do all, I don't do all that tra trash talking shit, you know? I mean, I, I just, I, I spend all my time in here or downstairs or in Church Street or at the edge, you know? I mean, right. I haven't got time to, to worry about what other people are saying or what other people are doing. And I've, I've never gone through life worrying, oh, that dude's saying this about me, or this guy's saying, if they say it to my face, and I'll just smack him in the face, you know? It's like, <laughs> this is why I'm a, uh, this is why I'm an MMA fighter. Right. But I mean, no, man, I, I, just, I just do what I need to do, you know? I mean, they, they, I'm the champion, so they know, I, they know who I, they need to come and see. Let them come and see me, you know? Now, you've, you've finished many guys with your uh, arm bar, and where do you learn that? You learn that here at Hendrick Gracie Academy, or you, I mean, you're from the UK. Where did you first start doing uh, jujitsu? Um, proper jujitsu was at the Gracie Baja in Channel Islands. It's uh, an affiliate of Radio Estima. My coach was Rob Staples. Um, he he brought my game on and, and taught me the, the, the fundamentals and very very good fundamentals. Uh, he got me started off, and, and, and that's where I was swinging armbars. And then the rest I just kind of picked up along the way, you know. And, and uh, yeah. What does it mean to you to be the Bellator Light Heavyweight Champion? It means a great deal, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm number one. It means that uh, people are, I ne don't necessarily have to go looking for fight, fights. People come looking at me for fights, so, and, and I don't turn down fights. Sure Dog has your number nine in the world at, at 205. Uh, do you feel like those rankings aren't quite accurate because you are number one in Bellator? Do you, how do you think you stack up against John Jones, against Dan Cormier? I mean, I don't really pay much attention to those to those uh, rankings, you know. I just do what I do. It makes no difference where I stand or, or to me, I got a belt. I'm the champion in Bellator, you know, and, and that makes me number one. You know, I mean, I know Daniel Cormier is the champion in, in UFC, but it's a different organization. You know? I'm number one in my organization, and, and that's what matters to me most. As the Bellator light heavyweight champion, you got to have an opinion about uh, the, the UFC light heavyweight title fight, Dan Cormier versus Gustafson. Who do you think is going to take that fight? I'm going with my boy uh, Cormier, definitely. Yeah, I think the wrestling is just overwhelming. Yeah, I, I've trained with him, man, and uh, I know he's a complete uh, monster, so um, yeah, I'm going for him. When you first went to Bellator from Ring of Combat, uh, what, what were you thinking? Uh, did, you, did you think it would happen as quickly as it happened to becoming the champion? Yeah, when I came over here, I mean, uh, I, I was supposed to fight in March of 2012 um, before I left Jersey. And the guy pulled out right at the very last minute. We got, we weighed in, the next day we were supposed to be fighting. I'm stood there, the names of people being called out, they didn't call my name out. And I looked at, the, I looked at my re referee and my mate and I was like, what's, what's going on? And he's like, we need to have a talk. And I was like, he's not fucking fighting, is he? So that got cancelled. So then I left Jersey without fighting. So I came over here in mad shape. And then all I want, I want, I want to fight straight away. But no one would would fight me. You know, I was training at Kurt Pellegrino's. You know, I mean, the the guys at that gym are absolutely awesome. So I was training there, and I didn't get a fight till end. I think it was July, and then I was leaving again. So then I had to fight. I left for four weeks. I had to get my, uh, I had to leave because of my visa thing. And I came back, and I didn't get another fight. You know, all I wanted to do is I, I, I needed, a, I need, I need money. You know, I want, right. I want to earn money. I want to fight. I want to. I just want to get going, you know. I mean, I, I was I'm, I'm getting a little bit older, so I wanted to just carry on, and I, I didn't know how much longer I had in the sport, you know. Right. So I just wanted to grab the bull by the horns and just, just let me fight. Where, what did you used to do? I was a steel fixer. A steel fixer. Yeah. Bro. What is that? Rebar. Oh. I built like yeah. big buildings, bridges, and roads, and, and things like that. It was construction. Yeah. Rebar construction. So, do you miss it at all? Um. I drive past sites, there's plenty of sites around in the city and I kind of look in and I see them big 40 mil bars and I'm like, uh, they're just evil looking, the big, thick things and I remember the cuts of my hands and, nah, I mean, I don't, 
the summertime I miss it, you know, you get paid to get a suntan and it's a good crack on the building site, you know, the, the lads that work outdoors, they love having a good time, right. they work, you get paid and there's good job satisfaction. When you spend so long building something, you can stand back and be like, I, I did that with my own hands, you know, it is good, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to go back to it now. What can these folks at home expect to see you versus Tito Ortiz? Did you just say blunts? Yeah. <laughs> Throwing the English terms in there. <laughs> they can expect to see everything whenever they see me fight, you know, violence. Um, they see a lot of entertainment. Um, just, just, just a good fight, man, you know. I don't, I don't like to go in there and, ha and have bad fights. I, the boring ones are just nothing really happens. It's, I, I, like to, uh, I like the entertainment, you know. I like to get a hit in the face if I can get a couple of hits off, you know. So good luck, man. Thank you very much. I'm Liam McGeary. You're watching MMA Noise on Louder Noise TV.